Of course, other events took place besides the motorsports games. The sixth stop of the FIA Eco Rally Cup took place in Monte Carlo. 24 models from 14 different car manufacturers took part in the regularity event. The aim is to consume as little energy as possible and to hit the time plan for the respective stage as precisely as possible. Jacques Pastor and Fulvio Gazzola in their Kia EV6 managed this best. Surprisingly, they relegated the big favorites Enrico Conde and Luca Sagnesa to second place in their Kia Isol. Kia's success was completed by Guido Guerini and Artur Prusak, who took third place in their Kia Nero. With one stop to go, the reigning champion Enrico Conde is once again the champion of the FIA Eco Rally Cup. The final round of the Formula Regional European Championship took place in Mugello. In the first two races, Paul Aron celebrated a lights to flag victory. The joy was even greater for Dino Beganovic. The Swede finishes fourth place to celebrate his title in the Formula Regional European Championship. This meant that the last race of the season was still about second place in the overall standings behind Dino Beganovic. Gabriel Mini needed to win and had hoped that Paul Aran would not finish in the points in order to pass the Estonian for second place. After a good start, the Italian caught the slipstream of the leader, Gabriel Bortoletto. At the right moment, the Italian struck, took over the lead and did not relinquish it. He was the first to cross the line. Bortoletto was second ahead of Beganovic. Because Paul Aran only finished in 11th place without scoring any points, Mini was able to celebrate his second place in the championship. The Baja Porto Alegre is the third to last stop of the FIA World Cup for cross-country Bajas. The absence of FIA Baja Series leading Miroslav Zaplatel is a chance for the Saudi Arabian driver Yazid Al Raji to take the lead in the championship. And he's doing well in his Toyota Hilux in first place before the last stage. But directly after the start of the last stage, Al Raji stops with an alternator belt failure. This is a big chance for Portuguese driver Joao Ferreira and co-driver David Monteiro. The recently crowned FIA European Cup for cross-country Baja champion wins the Baja Porto Alegre in his X-Raid Mini John Cooper Works rally by 21.7 seconds ahead of compatriot Joao Diaz, who took advantage of the wet and slippery last stage to finish an impressive second in his T3 Can-Am Maverick X3. There are three rally disciplines in the motorsport games, Rally 2, Rally 4, and Historic Rally. The format's the same for all categories. Over two days, the teams had to master 13 special stages. Only the three best teams then qualify for the final super special stage at Circuit Paul Ricard. In Rally 2, Team France's crew of Mathieu Erzeno and Romain Roche grabbed the lead early and qualified as the best team for the last stage. Together with Team France, Team Spain and Team Estonia made it into the medal round. In Rally 4, 10 teams competed. Team Spain and Team Italy fought for the lead for a long time. In the end, the Italians entered the decisive special stage with a small lead over the Spaniards. Team Turkey qualifies in third. The big favorite in the historic rally category was the 2021 FIA European Historic Rally champion Zippo in his Audi Quattro, and he lived up to his role as the favorite. Besides Zippo and co-driver Nicola Arena, Team Czech Republic and Team Spain also made it into the grand finale at Circuit Paul Ricard. The medals would ultimately be confirmed on the final super special stage at Circuit Paul Ricard from a clean slate in a rally cross style format for each of the three disciplines. A new situation for these rally drivers who are competing against each other at the same time. Team Spain has the best start in the historic rally final. The Porsche 911 SC of Antonio Sainz and David de la Puente manages to pull away a little, but then Zippo makes use of the power and four wheel drive of his Audi Quattro and passes his rivals. And the Czech duo Wojtek Steif and Vladimir Zelinka in their Opel Cadet also overtake Team Spain. In the end, a clear success for Team Italy, which wins gold with a lead of almost 20 seconds. Team Czech Republic took the silver medal and Team Spain finished with engine problems a distant third.
Team Italy against Team Turkey and Team Spain in the final in Rally 4. The Italians Roberto Dapra and Luca Guglielmete with a lightning start and a quick lead, while Team Spain defends second place ahead of Team Turkey. In the course of the race, the Turks Ali Turkan and Ahmed Burek Erdener are more and more behind. In the end, Team Italy wins the duel for the lead by 1.3 seconds, already the second rally gold medal for Team Italy. Team Spain coming home initially in second, but a 10 second time penalty would bump them to bronze and give the silver medal to Team Turkey. The first medal for Team Turkey at this year's motorsport games. In the Rally 2 final, Frenchman Mathieu Arzeno and Romain Roche are the big favorites and they confirm their dominance in the final stage as well. Team Spain and Team Estonia fighting for the silver medal, but in the end second place for the Spaniards Jose Maria Lopez and Borja Rosada. The bronze medal goes to the Estonians Georg Lename and co-pilot James Michael Morgan. The eight finalists in the cross car junior category all drive identical cross cars. Right from the start, Dutchman Nathan Ottink secures the lead. The Swede Alexander Gustafsson overtakes the Belgian Romuald Demelen. Then Team Sweden attacks Team Netherlands and takes the lead for a short time, but Ottink overtakes Gustafsson again on the inside. The Swede now getting pressure from Demelin, but he's able to defend his second position. That order remains the same up to the finish. Gold for Team Netherlands, silver for Team Sweden and bronze for Team Belgium. In the cross car senior category, the newly crowned European champion David Meat starts as favorite, but immediately gets pressure from the Italian Simone Firenze in the yellow cross car. However, the Frenchman remains in the lead while the Swede Patrick Halberg passes the Italian. Then Spaniard Ivan Pina Chinchilla overtakes the Italian with a beautiful maneuver. Team Spain also passes Team Sweden shortly before the end of the race, but the gold medal goes to David Miat and Team France after a superior performance. Silver for Team Spain and bronze for Team Sweden. In the Fanatec Esport Cup, 57 racers compete against each other. 37 nations are participating for the first time, including racers from Barbados, Mozambique, Bangladesh, Uzbekistan, Albania, and Guatemala. After a knockout competition to bring 57 down to 20, the best 20 racers face each other in a 60-minute final. Team UK racer James Baldwin starts from the pole position and dominated the race. James Baldwin wins his country's first FIA Motorsports Games gold medal with a flawless performance. He wins with a 2.942 second margin over Team Netherlands, Chris Hartefeld with Team Spain's Alberto Garcia Gomez in third place. In the GT Cup, two drivers form a team. In the final, Team Germany has pole position, but Team France has the better start and takes the lead. Early in the race, Team Ukraine overtakes Team UK and moves up into sixth place, while Team Germany, which had been one of the favorites, falls back to ninth place. Team Poland and Team Switzerland are now fighting for a podium spot.
After a driver change, Team Germany starts to race to catch up, while Team France takes the lead in the race. Place by place, Team Germany catches up, and it looks like they can still catch Team France. But then Team Hong Kong China and Team Chinese Taipei collide, and the latter loses a tire. With five minutes to go, there is a safety car phase. The decision in the race. Eric Debard and Simon Gachet take the first gold medal for France. Team Germany takes the silver medal and Team UK wins bronze. The GT Sprint Cup Final is the last race of the motorsports games. Australian Matt Campbell has pole position. Next to him is Belgian Dries Van Tour. At the start, Team Turkey moves up to second place. Team Belgium has to move to the outside and Team Australia uses the scuffle to pull away from the rest of the field. Then Italian Mirko Bortolotti attacks in the Team Italy Lamborghini. Team Turkey taking second place. A little later, Team Belgium passes the Turks. While Team Brazil overtakes Team Switzerland, Matt Campbell approaches the finish line unchallenged. Team Australia secures a final gold medal for the 2022 FIA Motorsport Games. Team Italy takes the silver medal and Team Belgium wins bronze. The runner-up finish for Team Italy is enough to ensure that they end the event's second edition on the top of the medals table. Italy leads the medals table with three gold medals, one silver, France is second with three gold medals, and Belgium third with a total of five medals. Spain wins the most medals with four silver, four bronze, but Italy is happy to be in first place on the medal table. So a fantastic motorsport games in France comes to an end. Au revoir Marseille, hola Valencia. The 2024 motorsport games will take place in Spain. That's it for today and for this year. FIA Pure Motorsport will be here again in 2023 with a whole spectrum of the FIA world of motorsport action. Till next time, take care everybody and ciao. As we get ready for the final race of the year, Steve Martin, the riders will line up on the grid. And uh, there are so many individual stories. We've got the international riders here this weekend. We've also got the riders that are desperate to try and finish their year off on a high. Mike Jones will start from pole position. He is the number one plate holder for the 2023 year. And also Jack Miller and Crew Halliday joining him on the front row of the grid. Yeah, absolutely. Glenn Allen, what a ride he had in race one. Arthur Cece's the, uh, the gun starter. Can he finish it off this time? Josh Waters, well, we know what he can do. He's fast as. Senna Agis, he's quick too. There's a lot of quick guys guys are on that third row, including Troy Herfos, who won the race from the third row, and Billy McConnell too, proving that he's got speed. Yeah, Daniel Fowles on in 10th place, Jed Metcher in 11th, and Wayne Maxwell all the way from 12th on the grid. They had problems in qualifying, no problems in race one for Maxwell, who carved his way through the field. Let's hope it's a better race for Brian Starring. Marcel Schroeder starting out of 14th, and Joel Kelso out of 15th, riding a superbike for the first time, with the impressive rookies, Brock Pierce and Max Stoper, joining the very experienced Ant West back on row six. Then it's Ben Burke, Bo Beaton, and Matt Walters on row seven. Yeah, Travis Wyman, Brendan McIntyre, Michael Kemp, Paris Harbick, Nathan Spiteri having his last race, Sloane Frost from New Zealand, and Chandler Cooper rounding out the field. Yep, congratulations to uh, both Wayne Maxwell and uh, Nathan Spiteri that will be retiring at the end of this race on sensational ASBK careers. And uh, Wayne Maxwell, he said he's been racing superbikes for 21 years now. Wow.
Zam Phillips leaves the start of the grid with the red flag. We're ready to go racing for the final time in 2022. Superbikes are go look for a fast starting after CC's jumping from the second row of the grid as the field makes their way down towards turn one for the first time. And here he comes through on bike number 61 after CC's to take up the running at the front. But charging down the inside is Jack Miller. And Miller will lead them through turn one for the first time. Look at Herfoss. He's coming through like that's, a hot knife through That's buzzer. Agis. That's Senna Agis that's moved up to second there. Herfoss is back in fifth position at the moment. Senna Agis, what a start he's got. Wow, that is unbelievable from Senna Agis. I thought it was a great start from Troy Herfoss. They did actually start next to each other on the grid, but uh, what a sensational day. Oh, oh no! We've got Josh Waters and uh, is that Marcel Schroeder down at turn one. Oh, well, you know, 30 into one doesn't go, especially in this case, and uh, unfortunately for Marcel Schroeder, he didn't make it through. But the uh, Thriller Motorsports number one rider, Jack Miller, leads the race. Good news is that both of those riders are up and uh, A-OK, -okay. their motorcycles maybe not so much though as the field makes its way around the back end of the circuit. It is Miller leading from Senna Agis. Uh, the CC's back to a third position. Mike Jones up to fourth. Yeah, well, it looks like Miller got a half-decent start that time as far as when he left the, the grid, um, it, the bike was smooth. So let's hope that he hasn't damaged anything on the bike this time uh, with that juddering clutch problem. It looks like it's been fixed. And uh, now the pressure's on from uh, young Senna Agis. We didn't expect to see that, who's carrying a lot of corner speed into their Suzuki corner there as they head around Honda for the first time. Well, I'll tell you what, one thing that's going to do is that he's going to fire the ride on bike number 17, Troy Herfoss, up the Incredibly, he took the victory in the first race this morning, but to see his young junior teammate having uh, his second meeting on that bike ahead will uh, fire the, uh, the man from Goldman, well, who now lives in Queensland, up more than anything else, especially uh, when he sees that he's got a couple of Yamahas in between to try and get up there and get on level terms with his teammate. Well, the pace is going to be hot when Miller's leading, you know that. Uh, I mean, with Arthur Cece's out there uh, last time round, it was hot, but Miller's going to be on lap record pace uh, for sure. He's um, here to have fun, and uh, that's the sort of guy. He ran a little bit wide there. Look at Agis. Jones up the inside of uh, Arthur Cece's as well to take up third position. Herfoss is all over the back of Arthur CC's machine as well on board the second of the Penrod Hondas, bike number 17. Then it's right behind him, it's Wayne Maxwell on board bike number one. Glenn Allerton right behind them in seventh place. Crew Halliday back in eighth, Matcher in ninth, and Brock Pearson rounds out the top ten. Yeah, that's a good ride for Brock Pearson. It's been a weekend that he hasn't been able to, uh, you know, he wants to put behind him, but they've turned it round and put himself into that top ten, so really, really happy to see that. Race control having a look at the incident at uh, turn one involving uh, Josh Waters and also Marcel Schroeder. Not, so, a good, uh, not a good weekend for Brian Starring, though. He's down in 23rd position, so uh, it's just not working out for him this weekend. Also, starting from 13th on the grid, he probably got caught up in that melee, yeah. which would have been just ahead of him uh, going into turn one for the first time. Look at Jones now. Well, we spoke about Cameron Duncan being let off the chain after wrapping up the, uh, the Super Sport 300 and R3 Cup championships. Well, that's exactly what Mike Jones is doing at the moment. He doesn't have the pressure of the championship on his mind. He's looking for a way up the inside of Adjus. Can't find his way through. Herfoss coming as well. And Glenn Allerton is also on a charge up the inside. And West. And, and West. Oh, yeah. Is that Crew Halliday? That's Crew Halliday. Halliday. Yeah, Crew Halliday on his way through. Arthur getting shuffled back at the moment. Uh, but I tell you, keep an eye on, on Wayne Maxwell. Maxwell up the inside. He was always going to try and make that pass. Jones is oh, wide. Oh, Maxwell oh. out of the seat. How did he manage to stay on board that bucking Bronco? Side by side. Herfoss is trying to go through there too. Here is a replay of the pass that Glenn Allerton put on after CC's. That was as clean as you like down the inside. He was able to get that bike stopped and turned. You can see, but watch this. Maxwell comes down the inside, tries to get the better of Mike Jones, gets on the gas, and then whoop! The front end came off the ground as he got on the gas so hard coming out of that corner that he just had to settle the bike back down and get back on track. This is a great ride by Senna Agis, exactly what he needs to do. There's a couple of bike lengths uh, between him and Mike Jones, uh, who's feeling the pressure from Herfoss now, who's got through on Wayne Maxwell. Herfoss, Maxwell, Allison, all uh, right there behind uh, Herfoss now. They all want to have a go at Mike Jones as they come down into turn six. It is still Miller that leads. Agis in second. Two of our uh, very well-talented exports that are racing overseas in championships. Of course, Jack Miller in MotoGP. Senna Agis in the Junior World Championship in Spain. Four wildcards this year in Moto2. A best finish of ninth at Valencia in Spain for the final race of the year and doing a great job here in only his second outing on the Penrod Honda Superbike.
Yeah, no pressure at the moment, Jack. There's a, a massive lineup of guys behind that uh, all want to win. I mean, look at Maxwell there. Back up the inside of Herfoss. Does Herfoss let him through? He has to. Uh, this is it. This is the final time they're actually going to get to watch Troy Herfoss and Wayne Maxwell go elbow to elbow on a racetrack, Steve. So it's exciting but somewhat sad at the same time because we've been watching it for so many years. I can't believe that that's actually coming to an end. Well, absolutely. And the new guard. I mean, uh, Senna's got a, a deal signed overseas, but to, to see him riding the superbike here like this um, is an uh, absolute pleasure to watch. Mike Jones also right onto the back of them as well on board bike number 46. He will be replacing that 46, uh, possibly with oh. the number one next year. Out just out of the seat. Here comes Wade Maxwell just ahead of Herfoss now. Can he get the slipstream from Jones in front? Maybe a fraction too far back to utilise that slipstream. But Allerton is right in uh, a perfect position to get the slipstream from Troy Herfoss. Shows you how fast that new Honda is. The BMW couldn't pull out the slipstream. That's the M1000RR, the uh, highly specced up model of Glenn Allerton that was uh, trying to stay with the very rapid Honda 1000 uh, Fireblade Triple R down the front straight. Well, this is a big bunch of super bikes and it's what we like to see, pretty exciting stuff. And uh, Jack, at the moment, looks like he's got a few bike lengths uh, on Mike Jones, who's made the move on St. Agis, and, and also Maxwell now up the inside. Yeah, Maxwell down the inside at turn six. We spoke about it in race number one, where Maxwell was able to put those moves on. He can get that bike in there very tight and also stop it, turn it, and get the power out on board the Boost Mobile Racing with K-Tech Machine. Of course, the team's been working exceptionally hard, and uh, the big comment was that the last couple of rounds, they seem to have more edge grip than everybody else. That's exactly where you can use it. Especially on the way in, you can see here Miller on. Let's just have a look in the background there, and it is Jones who dives up the inside. Senna just notices him at the last moment, readjusts his line, Mike Jones takes that spot, then up the inside, Wayne Maxwell, who in his, what's theoretically his last ASBK race, I'm sure he doesn't want to finish third, he'll be going for the win in this one. So Jones holds down a 0.6 of a second lead as they went through the third intermediate, they're coming round now to complete nine laps. Yeah, Jones is uh, on an absolute mission at, at a moment, 151.4 last time round, that's a pretty decent lap time for him too. And he's got a lead now of, uh, as he heads over the line, uh, let's have a quick look, 0.6 of a second. A 150.995 for Mike Jones, the fastest lap of the race. I thought that he'd ridden that lap like his hair was on fire, and that's exactly what he's done. A 151.206 for Herfoss, a 152.2. Wayne Maxwell was one second a lap slower on that last lap than Troy Herfoss. Troy Herfoss was making his way through traffic as well. Yeah, absolutely. Wayne is struggling for grip at the moment out there compared to these other guys. Uh, Mike is riding strong. Herfoss possibly the strongest but Herfoss uses all the track and a little bit more there uh, manages to hold it together and Mike uses that wide line Herfoss the tight line the gap is 0.6 between the number one and two on track. Miller and CC's also set their fastest laps of the race on the last lap. A 151.4 for Jack Miller, a 151.5 for Arthur CC's. They're disputing sixth position at the moment. The two former teammates in the Red Bull KTM AO outfit as Glenn Allerton and Wayne Maxwell are also disputing third position at the moment with Senna Adjus there to pick up any crumbs from uh, from that dispute. Well, Jones at the moment is he's gone. Look at it. That's uh, a pretty big gap um, with uh, uh, just a lap to go after this one. So Jones, if he can hold it together, uh, you know, he's going to have this one in the bag. Remembering he's riding with absolutely no pressure on him now for the first time in a long, long time. Well, there's no external pressure. There's only internal pressure from Mike Jones wanting to display to everybody, including Wayne Maxwell, that he is the fast rider that... Uh, He's shown all year he's fast, but he's also very consistent as that just goes down the inside of Glenn Allerton through turn 17, Michelin corner. Allerton takes a spot back, and uh, he, but he knows that Adjus is there, that's for sure now. Well, he's going to fire the M1000 up and try and utilise the slipstream from the Boost Mobile Racing with K-Tech. Ducati V4R as they come onto the My Bike Motorcycle Insurance start finish straight to get the last lap board. It is Jones that holds a 0.7 of a second lead over Troy Herfoss. Is that insurmountable for Troy Herfoss on this last lap? Well, knowing Troy Herfoss, I'm not going to say yes already, Steve. No, me neither. Herfoss is yes, oh, off! Herfoss is down! He's out of second Ow. place and also goes down Glenn Allerton. I think Glenn Allerton may have just had to back off the, uh, the throttle there and has unloaded the front and he's gone down, which leaves 
Senna Agius up into second place. Maxwell in third, but Maxwell's making a bid for second now as they come through turn six for the final time. Yeah, that was, uh, wow. Yeah, Allerton there just got freaked and they're on the side there. But Agis now, how hungry is he? Up the inside he goes. Miller's just sitting back watching this, uh, enjoying the show. Not much more that he can do than what he's done out there on that virtually standard bike. Uh, fantastic to see that cat bike out there. It's a shame he couldn't finish that first one. But uh, Senna Agis is uh, right there now and in front of Wayne Maxwell. Yeah, he's up into second place and Maxwell's got a fair bit of work to do in the final half of this lap if he wants to take second place from the uh, the young stand-in rider for the Penrite Honda team. But it is Mike Jones. He's only got a couple of corners to navigate now to take another win for this year. He comes around through the final corner, through Honda Corner and up over the top of the... Uh, this the hill and down into turn 17 for the final time. This is an incredible ride by Mike Jones. Now he's showing everyone what he can do. 51-1 the last lap. The lap before that, 50.9. These tyres are meant to be worn out. Mike Jones, if he wins this race, which it looks like he will, will take six wins for the year and be equal with Wayne Maxwell on race wins. Final corner, ride your motorcycle to work corner. Mike Jones has ridden his motorcycle to a race win in the final race for Alpine Star Superbike. Senna Adjus crosses the line in second. Wayne Maxwell on the podium in third. His final ASBK race for the three-time Australian Superbike champion. As we watch now, Joel Kelso coming to the line, having a good battle there with the... Bike number three, Jed Metzger, as they come across the line. Wow, what a final race, Steve Martin. And I think that uh, is a fitting end to the 2022 My Bike <laughs> Motorcycle Insurance Australian Superbike Championships. I think we all need a rest now. Well, that was insane. What a race by Mike Jones. Does he know, the, does he know it's over yet? He's still going flat out. That was incredible. It was incredible, and Mike Jones has taken a two-second victory over Senna Agis. Wayne Maxwell in third, Jack Miller in fourth. A sensational ride from the MotoGP star. Arthur Cece's his former teammate, back there in fifth position, right behind Crew Halliday in sixth, Ant West in seventh, Bowser in eighth, Brock Pearson in ninth. Joel Kelso rounds out the top ten. Yeah, good job by Joel Kelso there. Jack Miller, uh, well, he's not uh, rushing back to... Uh, <laughs> he doesn't have to be at any party. He doesn't have to be anywhere anytime soon. No, he doesn't. But he does have to have some fun. So. Well, he's having plenty of fun. I can't wait for a uh, Jack Miller-esque stoppy as he comes up to the, uh, the final area of the track. Yeah, I just really hope that Jack can uh, organise something to uh, come back at the end of uh, next year as well and, and make this an end-of-season tradition. Nice orange paint job on the cat work good wouldn't it uh, no seriously I mean yeah one one more time thank you to the Thriller Motorsport team for coming here uh, and helping uh, promote the show I mean it's uh, it's been fantastic hasn't it like Marcel Schroeder finished in 25th position in that race as well. Yeah, it's good to see that he got back up. Good to see Glenn Allerton actually got up and managed to finish in 14th place after that uh, crash Thank you, Jack Miller, for coming back and celebrating the final race of the 2022 My Bike Motorcycle Insurance Australian Superbike Championships presented by Motul and a fitting celebration from our MotoGP star on that last lap. Absolutely. Nothing like a little bit of uh, Pirelli rubber smoke burning uh, to uh, show just how much fun you've had. And, uh, boy, haven't the fans enjoyed seeing Jack Miller? I know I've enjoyed it. Have you, Phil? I have enjoyed it immensely, and I enjoyed that last race immensely, although a couple of times I nearly need to ring race safe for uh, a defibrillator <laughs> but what a final race of the season Mike Jones taking the win from Senna Agis and Wayne Maxwell and uh, well Jack Miller's making his way across into Park for me uh, in a cloud of smoke well we're going to be able to see exactly where Jack's been because there's a big black mark everywhere he's been so he's super impressive uh, and it looks like he's uh, still having a lot of fun <laughs> Well, we know where Park May is because uh, that is the directional arrow to the AMX Superstore's podium. Yeah, a little bit of... Uh, maybe she's just overheated a little bit there too, but it uh, doesn't matter. It's pretty warm. <laughs> that's, that's a little bit warm, he says. <laughs> the, the, the mechanic just rushing over there and um, trying to do something with it. Look at Jack, congratulating everybody. And uh, that's the reason why we love him. He is the people's champion. Yeah, 100%. 100%.
I don't think they're going to get any valuable data from that uh, Pirelli tyre. Uh, look, um, the fact that, uh, I mean, he's probably never raced on those tyres before. As you can see him there coming in, doing that uh, pit lane again. Um, I think it's uh, you know, pretty incredible. Look at that. Uh, two kilometres now, feet up. Most normal people will have fallen off at that. Time to head down to the AMX Superstores podium with Kate. Wayne Maxwell, a pretty wild race to kick off your retirement P3. Great to see you on the podium. Yeah, pretty lucky to get P3 then. Um, both uh, Troy and Glenn out, went out like synchronised uh, crashing, so um, I hope the boys are all right. Um, yeah, like to my guys, uh, the game, we just weren't good enough uh, then, you know, especially me. The bike was really good, but um, yeah, look, happy to finish off with uh, uh, a second and a first, a uh, second and a third rather, and um, yeah, I'm glad it's over. Come on, any final words to say goodbye? We're going to miss you. Nah, it's all good. It's all, uh, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a hell of a ride. Exceeded my expectations from a little kid growing up. And, um, yeah, there's plenty of little kids I see around here. And all I can say is dream big. And uh, you never know what can happen. Great. Thanks, Wayne. Thank you. And in P2 on the Penrite Honda, Senna Agius. Great start. There's so much to adjust to on that bike. I bet you didn't expect a podium this weekend. No, I didn't. Um, the pace in the race, I found a lot. We worked pretty hard, and after the little problem we had in race one, it's disappointing. But that was like a dream come true. I had a battle with Wayne on the last lap for his last race, and I've looked up to all these guys. I have a huge amount of respect for this championship and the guys, and even Jack coming back to race. And my last race of the year, 2022, I'm done. I feel like I need a holiday, but I'm, I'm, ready. I'm glad that it ended like this. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Senna. And in P1... Mike Jones, what a fitting way to end this weekend. You brought the aggression in that race too. You made Jack Miller stand up. Six win for the year. Well done. Thank you very much. Uh, just incredible to get that win to finish off the finish off the season. You know, um, uh, like obviously that first race was just to consolidate and get the get the championship, but that felt great just to ride how I wanted to and um, yeah, come away with the win to finish the year is just fantastic and. Not only for myself, but for for the team, they've put in a massive uh, amount of effort over the over the uh, over the year. So to reward them with a with a final win is just fantastic. Excellent, well done, Mike. Thank you very much. Cheers. And our final special guest, we need a quick chat with MotoGP star Jack Miller. A big thank you from everybody in Australia for the continued support that you give us in this great sport in Australia. Thanks for coming back again. No, it's awesome to be back. I don't feel like I belong up here. The other boys rode better than me today. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, an amazing turnout again this year. A lot more boys, a lot more speed. It was uh, made me work, but uh, no, I had a lot of fun. Awesome to see everyone back again. So. Uh, I don't know what we're going to do about a motorcycle for next year, but uh, we'll have to try and find one or try and get something put in the contract to make sure I'm able to come back because I love it here so much. I love doing this. Uh, so thank you, everyone. VAU Championship. We get the season started at Booker Covey Park Raceway south of Auckland. The VAUs will get to stretch their legs on the long supercars track with lots of opportunity for overtaking. In the field of drivers, a mix of rookies and old hands. So let's head down to the pits to a former racer in the class, Mike Buzz Lightfoot. Hi everyone, I'm Mike Lightfoot and welcome to another season of motorsport here in New Zealand. V8 utes are not even manufactured in Australia or New Zealand anymore. It's actually gone diesel, common rail, by turbo and they're even racing them now in Australia. But here in New Zealand, we're still racing the Ryko 247 V8 utes. Let's have a chat to the category manager, Cherie Brown. Mike, um, we've got four rounds lined up for this season. We're starting here in Pukki, uh, next round's at Hampton then back here at Pukki and finishing at Taupo. So um, Hampton, our second round, will be the part of the Grand Prix, so that's very exciting. Riker 24-7 are back with us again, which is just fantastic. Their support is um, incredible, and they're, they're great people to deal with. So um, yeah, it makes it great for all of us. Well, what is this VAU? Well, there's a number of distances. Um, definitely, they're still a road-going chassis with a roll cage in it. There's no strengthening anywhere on them. The brakes, we're on an AP six-pot caliper with a 355mm rotor, front 32mm thick, and the same size rotor in the back with a four-pot caliper. The suspension's all adjustable platform, um, so 
change ride heights, gen setup, that sort of carry on. We run a spherical adjustable bush in all the suspension components, which is a lot stronger than any rubber or neoprene fitting in it. And we run a seven and a quarter inch triple, uh, twin plate clutch and a real light flywheel, so that gets them off the line pretty good, helps them rev out good. And, and what about weight in the rear of the rear? A lot of people believe that you have weight in the rear of these things. And also, uh, just tell me about the horsepower that's, that's pushing into those rear wheels. Okay, the horsepower's sort of been kept a bit of a secret with the parity tune, the way it's been done, but I believe it's around the 400 mark, maybe 420, um, probably on the top side of things. And we run that through a six-speed transmission, and then through to the diffs, a lock diff as well in it. And then um, with the lock diff in the back, it tends to make the car push a little bit because both back wheels are trying to drive it straight forwards. As far as weight goes, there's a lot of adjustable suspension in it, and so you, you adjust the camber in the rear and all this and power in, which actually gives you the grip back in the back. So they're actually quite a lot different than the standard U. Yeah, at the end of the day, uh, yep. So you're having a run this weekend yourself? Yeah, last minute call up. Got the call 9.30 Friday morning saying he's not gonna make it, so I would have better take the spot. Good luck, mate, this weekend. Yeah, cheers, you never miss an opportunity, eh? Yes, Jake Stoneman stepping into Matt Spratt's Ute for the weekend. And he'll line up alongside defending champ Paul Manuel on the front row of the grid with class rookie Shane Dias alongside the veteran Peter Chaos Ward. Race start, Manuel gets off to a great start from that favoured grid one side of the track. Paul Vigier, well, he's made up about three places from the rear of the grid and a great move as they stream around Pookie for the first time. Back with the race action and Stoneman right with Manuel as they head down the back straight for the first time as well. Stoneman used all its experience. Remember, it's a borrowed car, only stepped in on Friday. Tries the outside lamb, but Manuel has got him and got him covered. While Wardy, he fends off the challenge from Shane Dias, the V8 rookie, who cut his teeth racing in the BMW E30 series. And Philip Ross, too, of the total unit. Just his second meeting, heading off Simon Usher and Stu Monteith. On board, back down by the hairpin, and Philip Ross trying to hold off the challenge from 94. Simon Usher, and doing a good job too. Ross starting to pull a gap. Pressure was all on Stu Monteith. As he goes around. Oh, hold on to it. Yes. <laughs> oh, no. The old year, nah. Bad luck. Meanwhile, out in front, Manuel continuing that form that saw him take the championship crown last season. Well, in fact, only a couple of months ago because of the COVID lockdown situation. Showing all his cool, calm collectiveness around Pukekohe. He's raced here over 30 years. Can you believe it? That's experience with a capital E. Jake Stoneman staying with him, coming out of the hairpin, but you can just see he can't close that gap as Paul Manuel takes the checkered flag for race one. Stoneman taking home second, and Peter Chaos Ward keeping it clean for third from Shane Dias. Good, clean, fast race. Once again, Paul Manuel confirming just one second clear of Stoneman, then Ward and Dias. Philip Ross just staying in front for fifth. Then it's Usher, Cruyff, Lowe, Monteith recovering for ninth, ahead of Paul Fugier. Yeah, it was blistering uh, qualifying and, yeah, awesome lap in that race as well. That was an awesome race. Really enjoyed it. Made one little mistake out of turn six, which let Paul get a bit of a gap on me, and then he can drive the fast line. Makes it pretty hard to catch up from there. And you, you're enjoying being back in the seat? Like, is this something you could do permanently again? I think it's a pretty silly question, really, isn't it? Of course it is. Yeah, love it. So I've got to say a big heads up to Matt Spratt and um, Tyreworks Mega and stuff for allowing the opportunity. And, um, yeah, bloody beauty. Yeah, pretty good, considering yesterday we had all sorts of mechanical issues, so we got my head around that, but still off the pace a bit. But, no, I'm happy with that. Since Ryko 24-7 have been involved in the championship, local franchisee Dave Shaggy Lowe has taken the plunge and now races the number 82 Ute. David, you started off as a franchisee, you followed the V8 Utes, now you're driving one. How does it feel to be a part of the sponsorship team and actually racing one of these cars? Oh, it's uh, really good, but it'd be a lot better if I wasn't dead last every race, pretty much. So, 
But um, because we've got Ryko on my ute and there's uh, Ryko sponsoring the series, we're hoping that some of the faster guys will let me pass them every now and then, you know? Do you think you should stick to hydraulics, mate? Yeah, and driving tractors and diggers is more my style than fast cars and utes, so yeah. Azeem Aslam, General Manager of Sales and Operations for Ryko, what does it mean for you to be involved in the V8 series? Mike, it's, it's brilliant. The series is great. Um, and Ryko 24-7 is our brand, it's our mobile service, and that's what we're out to provide to our customers is service. Breakdown service 24 hours a day, seven days a week. As part of being a race car driver, there's a lot of focus needed when you're in the car. And then your coach will work with you, he'll teach you things that you need to do. Let's have a look how the Ryko 24-7 V8 Ute drivers do it to get focused before their race. Well, let's just leave it to Formula First driver Louis Sharp to show them how it's done. Cool looking Utes getting ready for a hot race to reverse grid showdown. So it's all smoky for here on the pole with Mangle and Stoneman starting down the back of the race. Well, let's see how they get it going. And Fajir's done a good job here as the rest of the fast dudes come charging down towards the iconic turn one of Booker going. How close is that? Putting you in the driver's seat. Coming around turn one, there you gotta line it up, run the ripples between two and three. Get your foot down, let the rear just sort of glide, the power glide onto the back straight. And look at Paul Manuel already moving up through the field. Now let's take a look at the replay and check out exactly how we did it. Watch the master manual at work. Weasels his way past Ross. Got the power on, smooth and fast down the back straight. So he's clinked up those two. Great view from the rear. Meanwhile, Jake Stoneman on the charge, trying to get up into fifth at turn five. Oh, he's just out, breaks himself here. Oh, slams into one of the cars. That's ruined his race. But up front, just take a look at Dave Shaggy Low, the Ryko man, into second after Paul Vigier goes wide and gets onto the grass. Oh, well done. Just avoided that possible collision there. Look who's on the move. Manuel up into fifth. Now fourth. Shane Dice going with him as well. Nice bit of late breaking going into turn one. Manuel tucked straight back into the, the back of the Napa man. Paul Fagier. See if he can make a move here and work his way up into third. Reverse grid race, remember, after taking out the opening race of the weekend. And he is on the move. And tucked right in behind Manuel Slipstream. Watch out for Peter Ward. His nickname was Chaos, but now he's actually a really smooth, fast driver. Gets it sideways every once in a while, but very, very well improved driver over the last couple of years. Manual right round the outside of Shaggy. Bit of a sitting duck as they head towards that hairpin. We'll see how Manual tries to line them up. This is one of the infamous corners. Still got the famous bumps here at Pukekohe. The car will lurch itself to the right before you go flying up and over the hill. Manual through to second, showing all of his experience. Wardy, now it's his turn, down towards turn one. Foot down, son, hold on to it. Down that back straight, Stu Monteith looks like he's no match for Manuel. Using the Scud Mobile this weekend, Stu Monteith, that's 99, Brett Rudd's old machine. There's the famous kink that the supercars use here at Pukekohe, that long part of the track. Ward trying to follow and make it look really easy as well. Up against Monteith, has a look down the inside. Monteith doing a good job though, holding him off. 
next in the queue. Great drone shots here. You can see Shane Dias in the blue ute. He's from the BMW E30 series, so that's where he's got all his race craft. And talking about crafty, there he is, Peter Ward. No chaos there. That's all great car control. Makes the move, gets the pass. Now, next in the queue, Shane Dice. What can he do? He lines up Monteith around turn one. And a great little move. Oh, no, well blocked. Good cover by Monteith. As they head down towards that back straight. And now, one of the great passing moves, and this time a nice easy pass gets the job done. Meanwhile, it's Jake Stoneman charging from the rear of the grid. He's caught and passed Ross. Now he's got Cruyff in his sights. The 23 Valley Toyota yet. Nice bit of drop. <laughs> a little bit sideways. That's what these heats can do as the rear just slips out. And Stoneman gets the job done. Makes the move down the back straight. Back towards the hairpin. Stoneman trying to make a move on Fogier. And Fogier giving him lots of racing room. That's one of the great things about the series. A lot of respect amongst the drivers now. A lap later, and Lowy, oh, he makes it easy for Stoneman as he runs wide and locks it up. Goes around. Talk about having fun, Trev. Oh, Fagier riding the ripples of the Napa Ute and holding on to it. Only just, though. Oh, but not Greg Cruyff. He's been outbraked himself. Coming down into turn five with Philip Ross. They're good mates. And he's just burned himself big time on the grass there. Monteith. <laughs> you can see how wide these units can go, but straight and fast. Paul Manuel gets the job done again. Two from two for the weekend. Wardy coming home for second. And Shane Dice for third. So it's Manuel. Makes it two from two. Wardy going one better, moving up to second. Shane Dice getting a place on the podium. Good skills for the man. And one of the rookies in the series. Yeah, I paid off Jake's teammate to uh, take him out. And uh, that worked retreat. So we got rid of the opposition early in the piece. And um, Bruce was uh, plain sailing, really. Mate, I think we're going to have to put a patch over one eye. Yeah, oh, honestly, I've, I mean, I've done a million laps around here. Love the place, and um, yeah, it's just, you know, the thing's working good, and the guys have done a great job, and when you've got something confident and good underneath you, yeah, the sky's the limit, it's great. Manuel, I let Manuel, I didn't realise he'd come in on the inside, give him a, I'd give him a little bit of room, he'd come through nicely, and he owned me, so it was all right. And then I was sort of hoping that the race was going to be over on lap eight. I was buggered. Yeah, 12 laps is a long time in a V8 Ute, mate. Oh, it is. It was getting hot, too. It was like, holy, is this ever going to be over? Shane Dice, the first time in a V8 Ute this weekend. You've had a fourth and now a third. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, cheers, mate. Thanks a lot. Bit of a surprise to be up the pointy end this early. But, um, yeah, no, it's good. Still a way off those front boys, though. So, yeah, still, still plenty to learn. Stick around. Coming up after the break, it's the third race of round one. And we check out a unique award. Yes, it could only happen in the RICO 24 7 V8 Utes. Peter Chaos Ward, the RICO 24 7 V8 Utes. They have a little bit of a unique award. When I look through it, your episode four, clearly it's yours. What's it called and tell me how you won it. Um, I won the Rats Ass Award because in the last lap of the last race of the last meeting, in the last minute just about, I managed to um, come into the corner. I knew Collinson had me on the way out. He just had too much, too much wedge. And I, I cocked it up really badly. I changed down, the, dropped the gear too much. And basically, I spun myself around. I took Collinson out, so I managed to get the illustrious award. Just for the record, I'm only minding it for Manuel too, though. <laughs> they don't call you chaos for nothing, mate. They don't call you chaos for nothing. <laughs> A deserved winner of the Red Ass Award. Well done. Yeah, well, thanks very much. 
Now, if the livery on the number 700 you, looks familiar, it's because the driver is Philip Ross, cousin of NZV8 stalwart Nick Ross, who races 007. Ross was introduced to the class by his mate, Greg Cruyff, and has it looked back. Yeah, yep. Yeah. He, um, they were looking at what classes to run, and uh, I told them that this was a bloody good class, good bunch of people, and um, yeah, he'd enjoy it. And um, he's enjoying it so much, he's showing me up. <laughs> so, Philip, this is your first time in the car. You're no longer the apprentice. You're, you're now showing him up, as he just said. Yeah, he actually likes to be referred to as Sensei in, uh, in the U class. Um, yeah, no, it's bloody good. All the boys are showing me the ropes. And, um, yeah, no, everyone couldn't be more helpful. And it's, yeah, showing, because lap times are getting better. And, no, it's going good. So let's see how the Master and the Apprentice go in race three, or Sensei, as he likes to be known as. Another 10-lap sprint race to finish off the weekend. On pole, Paul Manuel, Peter Ward in second, Stoneman third, and Dias in fourth. This is to wrap up the opening weekend of the RICO 24-7. V8 Utes, green flag, clean away. Manuel, Ward, Stoneman, straight back into the action, straight back to the front of the field. Meanwhile, let's check out what's happening on board Shaggy Low at the back of the field. Oh, turn it up, he's onto the grass. What are you doing, Shaggy? That'll test the hydraulics. Meanwhile, lap three, Ward, he's under pressure. Get the tyres squealing as they search for grip around turn one. Oh, he's gone onto the grass, another one. Gonna get loose, easily done in one of these big utes around Pukekohe. Back at the hairpin, and it's Stoneman. Oh, he locks it up. Easily done. Now check out one of the great shots here. That's the eye in the sky, the drone up there. And how's that for a bird's eye view of turn one? Beauty. On board, back straight, screaming you. Coming down to the braking zone for turn five, one of the great passing opportunities. Stoneman, he cooked it once there before. Can he get the inside line and force Wardy out wide? Left drift right over towards that inside line, towards the hairpin. You see Wardy's going to live there. Stoneman giving him plenty of room. No locking up this time. Two by two coming out of the hairpin. That's great car control. And he's now he's got the inside line heading in towards the hill. Can he hold it there? Oh, just runs and ripples. He knows Wardy's still there. Great racing. Oh, how close could you be? Look at that twitching as it hits the ripples. Now he's going to go wide. Don't want to get onto the grass here, though. That's a big look. That's a good old shape that this bird can fake as he goes charging down towards turn one. Back straight. This is that passing opportunity in turn five. Wardy holding it up. Stoneman. He's going to live there and he's going to force Wardy wide. Great example of how these youths have really progressed. Remember, 48 Stoneman filling in for Matt Sprout over the weekend. He builds the youths and now he's showing the boys how to race them. But look at Peter Ward, two by two, two laps in a row. Puts the arse around. That's not a rat's arse at all. That's just a loose one. And because of that, Stoneman gets the pass. And Manuel makes that a clean sweep for the weekend. A great way to wrap up the opening round of the RICO 24-7 V8 Utes. So it's Manuel, three from three. Great way to start the championship. Jake Stoneman back on the podium. Peter Ward wraps up the third place. And on the points, Paul Manuel leads the table from Peter Ward.